So welcome. My name is Dimitri Broxton. I am the Senior Director of Education at MOAD, and this is Community Resilience Healing with Houseplants. Um, I'm really excited to have this conversation. It's been a long time coming. I'm going to start off by, by reading a couple statements from the museum and then also bios, and then we'll jump into this conversation. We want to make this interactive, so please feel free to drop comments into the chat. Again, on Facebook, I'll also be reading those at the same time, um, and we will get to all your questions. So today's program was made possible by generous donation by Art Bridges Foundation, MOAD members and viewers like you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your support over these last few months. I'm going to read some statements before we jump in. Um, so first, Black Lives Matter. Um, MOAD stands in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. We honor and mourn the senseless murders of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Tony McDade, and Breonna Taylor, whose death sits heavily on our hearts following last week's verdict. We also mourn so many others who have lost their lives at the hands of police brutality and racial injustice, including those whose names we do not know. Uh, MOAD, as, as Museum of the African Diaspora, we also want to do a land acknowledgement. So as many of us are settlers, immigrants, or descendants of those forcefully brought to this continent, our institutions were founded upon exclusions and erasures of the indigenous peoples whose lands we are located. With deep respect, MOAD acknowledges that even in the virtual space, our people, our work, and our network servers on the native lands, and we thank the indigenous peoples of the Bay Area who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. Um, we also have folks in New York, Florida, and in Barbados today. So our, my wonderful guest that I'm so excited to be talking to today, um, I'm going to start off uh, Brittany Minor. <laughs> Please join us. But uh, Brittany Minor is uh, Black Girl Green World on Instagram. So after graduating with a degree in Africana Studies and doing a stint of AmeriCorps in Los Angeles, Brittany started one of many blogs. That blog turned into a career and opened up a slew of opportunities. Her passion for digital marketing has taken Brittany from self-employment to corporate work and back many times over the last 13 years. From launching online spaces like Black Moms of Orlando and her hashtag Plantstagram, Black Girl Green World, Brittany's passion for supporting and creating safe spaces where Black people can be their authentic selves goes deep. She currently works in the social media department of a healthcare organization and despite being vocal online, in real life, she's low key and enjoys quiet time over being out and about. When she isn't dreaming up a new business idea or her next solo trip, Brittany is playing with plants and wrangling her little kids in humid Florida with her husband. Next up, we have Cartrez Tucker um, at Black Boy Plant Joy on Instagram. So Cartrez is a Georgia born, self proclaimed, aggressively gay, musical theater active <laughs> actor and plant enthusiast living and thriving in New York City. When he's not playing in soil, he's typically on the road touring with Broadway shows. He was last seen in the touring company of The Color Purple and playing Stevie Wonder in Motown the musical. I wanna see that. <laughs> he strives to bring light. I'm trying to like contain myself. <laughs> right? That is so cool. I'm such a Broadway nerd. Yes, Brittany, I'm crying too. Oh my God. <laughs> that is amazing. He strives to bring light and levity in the world through art, music, comedy, and gardening. And we are also joined with the lovely Sherry Watson at Carib Cultivated. Sherry Watson is a 28-year-old foreign language educator based in the beautiful island of Barbados, where I plan to move soon. <laughs> <laughs> As a teacher, I want to. As a teacher, her emphasis is placed on building loving relationships with her students and prioritizing their mental health. She has served as a creative director for a mentorship platform for Caribbean students. A lover of the art, Sherry knows five languages, wow, and is a watercolor and calligraphy <laughs> artist. Most recently, she has used her Instagram page at Carib Cultivated to educate and inspire others to cultivate joy, peace, and community through sharing her culture and her plants. She has also been a virtual and local plant uh, consultant to help others lead a more vibrant life with the help of plants. Welcome to my amazing guests. I'm so excited to have y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this, you know, just kind of this conversation was really sparked by, you know, I've, I've been into the, I've been into plants pretty much my whole life, 
But, you know, when COVID hit, <laughs> it, like most people, for me, it intensified. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, ser- seriously intensified. And then I kind of thought, you know, going online, I kind of felt like I was alone. Like, as a person of color, is this a space that I, that, that I, that I can fit in? Because most right. of the influencers did not look like me. And Correct. so the more that I thought about it and started to build up my community, I think what really happened was I think the three of you posted, you know, videos on, on your, um, you posted uh, messages on your Instagram account or you posted stories. And so just kind of really on that same day, I was just like, let me send them a message. I wonder if they would be interested. <laughs> and it, it just, you know, it just kind of happened by Kismet where I was watching your videos and you guys are folks that, that I have followed for a while and I'm so inspired by. So I'm really glad, first of all, I just want to say, say that you said yes. <laughs> yes. Well, thank, thank you for you asking me. us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you. no, y'all are just amazing. And so, you know, can you start off by telling people about yourself, um, where you're joining from? I read your bios, but also, you know, what was your journey to get into houseplants? Sure, you can go ladies first. <laughs> um, I'm from Barbados, as Dimitri mentioned, and I've always been surrounded by plants because of my dad, who is the master gardener, um, but I've never had them. I don't know why. I've never even thought of keeping plants for myself, but if you look at my pictures from the past, like, I am always by a plant. I'm always, like, trying to get, like, photos with foliage and flowers, and even as an artist, that's what I like to paint. I like to paint foliage and flowers but when lockdown happened um, in Barbados due to the pandemic I was kind of going out of my mind and so I'm definitely a a corona plant mom I started that way but um, my dad gifted me this Monstera Adansoniae and it was he probably had four leaves he had some others and I was like I wonder if he'll give me this one and (laughs) I just got obsessed because I was like this is very close to the plant that I love because I had already loved plants. Like I wanted a Monstera Deliciosa, could not find any on the island. I was like, this is close to that. Little did I know it was in the family. And I just started to collect from there and I became obsessed because I'm not the sort of person that, you know, I like something and oh, that's cute. I'm the sort of person, I like plants. I must have 200 and here we are. (laughs) Yeah, so (laughs) no, no, I, No, I do it every day and it became self-care for my mental health because I had really bad insomnia. I had some depression as well because of being like stuck, but um, it just caring for something else that isn't another human, first of all, because that's really draining. um, It just lights up your world. It makes you happier. It gives you peace. And so now I'm here. (laughs) <laughs> talking to you guys yeah. 200 and, plants and, later yeah and 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 is it 200 or is <laughs> it's, it's close I would say it's close but again I'm not going to count my father's plants and I'm not going to count plants that I decide to put into the ground because they're in the ground so now they belong to the earth I don't mm, those are not on okay. my okay but okay. I and I also give away a lot of plants a lot of my friends will tell you I'm always trying to give somebody a plant because I'm like this this makes me feel really good I want this for you too and right. so even starting back school as a teacher I've gifted a lot of teachers plants because I'm like we're going through it and not many people care here have mm-hmm. a plant mm-hmm. that's all I can do you know so yeah <laughs> that's me Mr. Tucker. Well, uh, my name is Cartrez. I'm from Atlanta, but uh, I live in New York City. I've been in New York City for 10 years. I've been into flowers and like gardening much of my life, but um, I've had house plants for the past three years. So I travel a lot for work. Like you said, I'm an actor. I tour a lot. (laughs) Um, So it's really hard to take care of them. So I never had a lot of them. I think before COVID, I had maybe 15, 15, and I was like, this is all I need. Like, this is good enough. <laughs> and then obviously COVID happened. And I was like, oh, let me just go to the flower shop and just get one plant. So the one plant started off as like a, 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 a red maranta, which was a, a prayer plant. Mm, and then 
Uh, I love it. And then it became like Monstera Deliciosa, and then it became like Calathea's, then it was Philodendron, and then all of a sudden here we are, and it's like, we're like 80 plants deep. Yeah, jungle. Up, up in the game. It's a jungle. Um, <laughs> but I found, it is a jungle, because before COVID, like I was traveling, I was on the tour with Color Purple, and that kind of just stopped like abruptly. <laughs> so right now there is no theater at all in the States. So the plants has like, not only has it like relieved stress for me because I was like, well, what the hell am I going to do now? Like, all I know is like performing, like what the hell? I can't do nothing else, Jesus. So it, I was, it became like my new outlet. It was something that I could like uh, fuel like my anxiety and my stress yeah. and like all these idle hands I have to like do <laughs> things, you know? And then uh, I was encouraged to start a plant Instagram by, you know, Paul. Yes, yes. He was like, oh, you, you got all these house plants. Like, you should start an Instagram. And I was like, honey, ain't nobody trying to look at me. <laughs> 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 ain't nobody trying to watch me with no plants. And then it just, videos and everything. Yeah. It, it just snowballed from there. And here we are, 80 plants deep. And now we're on a Zoom little webinar about plants. I know. <laughs> and you just recently got a whole spread in Boys With Plants, I see. Yes, I got to, because I also, because <laughs> I also paint pots. So that's also a thing. I also paint my own terracotta pots, which also, which sort of started just because like pots are expensive, mm -hmm. period. Very. Mm -hmm. Very expensive. I don't know how someone called Jeff, Jeff Bezos and tell him to sort it out, but <laughs> pots are expensive. So I was like, well, like, I have decent, uh, you know, artistic abilities. I'm not like Sherry, like I don't do watercoloring or anything like that. But I was like, I can color inside some lines. Like I have things in my head. That's that all I you need. Do, right? That's all you need. Mm -hmm. So it, it just like snowballed and I was painting all these pots. And then of course, uh, Scott from Boys of Plants saw it. And then he was like, do you, would you like to do this thing where, you know, you give a tutorial about how to paint pots? So I was like, absolutely. I did not, I thought it was gonna be like, hey, my name is Cartres, like I'm paying pie. There's like this one page little, mm -hmm. ends up being like a whole spread about me and painting pots, which is like the whole, like this whole plant thing has been sort of like a whirlwind for me, I feel. Mm -hmm. That is one amazing. So, zero after 100. Yeah, so so both of you, I mean, you know, the, the explosion happened post COVID. Um, did, you, did you grow up with plants? And you know, and and what was what was that relationship that you had growing up with them? Um, personally, we don't really keep plants in the house that much. <laughs> you don't have to. We have, yeah, there's right. plants everywhere outside, so we don't keep house plants like that. So this is really weird. And I found a little lizard friend last night, and it in was your like, house in the like around the plants lizards are always in the house but like a green lizard white lizards are in the house but a green lizard was in here and he's just chilling on the alocasia like hoo, hoo. <laughs> like just let's have an agreement that you know you don't come to my bed when i turn off these lights but he was like falling asleep on my calathea anyway oh i just it was very cute but it was also very like are you going to be cute forever or can we like be friends or are you going to come and attack me Anyway, so my father keeps his plants outside because the weather is perfect. The humidity is literally 70 something, 80 something every day. Wow. And we have two seasons, dry and wet. We don't have fall, <laughs> we don't have spring, we don't have anything like that. So we can keep plants out, outside all the time. But even he would admit that um, this is not normal what i what i have created outside for us this is not this is not what he did but he started it i'm just i always enjoyed like walking through the garden and like being at peace my mom would say that i always pick flowers um for her for any any event mother's day i would always go in the morning make breakfast and then pick flowers so i love growing up with that but i don't know why until corona hit i never thought you should actually have house plants like that should be a thing that you do and now now we do and i love it <laughs> there it is so 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 Catrez, did you did you always have a green thumb <laughs> i i never had time for a green thumb um 
but uh, my great grandmother Gladys had hundreds of house plants, hundreds mm. and hundreds, and she also was heavily into ceramics as well. So little did I know there was like this through line between like me and my great grandmother. Because I, I was posting on my regular Instagram, like all these plants I was getting and my family was like, you are, you are your grandmother's grandson. Like you, like you are her grandson. So because I've always, I've always been into flowers and like foliage. Mm -hmm. You know, I have always loved them. But like I said, it never occurred to me like, oh, I could have my own little indoor jungle. Right. Yeah. That was, that why. was never, that was never in a realm of possibility for me. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I don't have time. Like, and then COVID, COVID, like, like you said, COVID expedited everything. Yeah. And I, and little did I know, not only did I love plants as much as I do, but I also have like a knack for taking care of them and like growing them. So it's been, it's, it's, it's truly been a gift, honestly. Like, this is something that I did. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, this is just something that was never in my realm of vision. Like, I was just like, mm -hmm. oh, this is, you know, this is yeah. not something I could see myself doing, but alas, here we are. I would also yes, say um, from last year, I forgot that I had tried, <laughs> I had tried to bring plants into my life once. Um, because it was the first week of school and it was like, you know what, I'm going to get a palm from my classroom. Oh, and no. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know where this is going. I know you know where this is going. Oh, no. Okay. And when I got there, I also saw what I now know to be a fiddly fig. And the guy Absolutely was like, not. <laughs> exactly for yeah. a beginner. The guy was like, this is going to grow so big. The leaves can get bigger than your bag. I promise you, you're going to love it. And my dad was like, yeah, try it. Why not? La, la, la. Of course, again, he's not a house plant guy. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't like, no, no beginner should have that plant ever. Um, <laughs> and I got it and it became a stick. Just one stick. And the whole staff, my whole staff just laughed at me and they made fun of me. So when this happened in Corona, they were like, uh, uh, wait, this is not, what happened in this time? Every day a leaf would fall and they would just be like, they literally took a picture of it, posted it in the group chat, oh, no. laugh, laugh, laugh. And now I'm like, yes, I'm anti-nature, okay? Like, mother nature, I'm anti and I can do this and I can do it well. So, right. yeah, when you have that the time, is amazing. when you have the time, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've seen that a lot of folks, I, I have a couple of friends that I'm like, they're like, I'm going to get some plants. And I'm like, really? They can barely <laughs> take care of yourself. But, you know, it's, it's the thing that that has happened. And, you know, people are really changing. I, I hope, and I hope yeah. it sticks post, post quarantine for folks. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think, I think another reason, a big reason I wanted to do this, this talk with, with, uh, especially you today was just, um, as again, we, we kind of talked about this before we started going live, but just representation. And mm -hmm. um, you know, when you when you look at home and garden magazines, you rarely see a person of color and specifically not a black person That's <laughs> on, right. featured right. on them. Things have changed in the last maybe two months, but prior to that, you really didn't. And you know, I remember for me seeing Hilton Carter's work and just being like, wait. Wait, hold on, you know, because I, I thought I was this weirdo with, with yeah. a couple of little plants here and there, but it, you know, it wasn't a really a thing for, for folks. And then seeing someone like Hilton Carter, and it's like, oh, they're, they're, you can inhabit this space as an African American, mm -hmm. you know, and you can, you can do it up like crazy. Yeah, do um, well. Yeah, so, so for the two of you, you know, representation, you are, um, you are you are people that other folks look to. You are you are teachers. You are in, in, you inspire folks. You make funny videos. <laughs> you make informative videos. Uh, it's about you know you you talk about your mental health. Um, you know through through growing your plants and and, and mm -hmm. helping other people take care of them. Why does representation matter to you? I let Curtis start. Well, I think it, I think it is important because even, even with, I, I do theater. So the thing is like, I, I don't think I would have even been able to think that this was something that I was able to do if people hadn't done it before me. Uh, you say Hilton Carter, like for me, it was Plant Queen. 
You know, <laughs> this is a person who is a queer person who's uh, who's you know dominating this you know this plants to gram plants to fluencer space in a way that nobody's ever done it or ever could have perceived it to be. So he, I think that is important because seeing him do it gave me you know the felt like I had you know the skill to do it as well. Like oh, if he can do it, I can do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I have to agree with that. I think that. When I was when I started and I got that one little monster and at Ansoni, I um, I immediately followed a lot of people because as I said, when I love something, when I like something, I love it. So I dived right in. I dove right in, right. and it was like maybe fifty people on my personal page I followed. And as I looked on YouTube as well, I remember the first person on Instagram I followed was Black Girls with Gardens and Plant Arena. Because I was like, okay, Plantarina is great. And I enjoy her page so much and her YouTube. But I was like, is there any, are we, are we present? Are we here? Um, mm -hmm. And I always search to see where are the people that look like me um, right. in this space. And she has been, she has been like a fairy godmother in this space for, for Black women, I would say. Um, her and Black people with plants have lifted me up so much reposted me so much that mm -hmm. most of my success if I got like 50 followers in one day it was because she posted me it was because mm -hmm. black people with plants posted me it was always it was never um you know a page run from by somebody that looks different that put mm -hmm. me up and was like this is somebody with valuable content beautiful content um well thought out content that you should follow that you should watch um so yeah, I love Jasmine, and if you're watching, thank you for everything. She <laughs> she has been the blueprint. You know, as Carter said, we need we needed to see that it was doable, possible. Was possible. Yeah, yeah, and she's the person who you rarely even see her face on her page, even though she gives a lot of excellent information. She is fantastic. She has a million plants. Mm. You see her uplifting other women. You know, and. I'm grateful for her. Jasmine is the best. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I kind of want to go Sherry into, oh, I guess, I guess this question is for both of you, but you know, I definitely, you know, I have Barbados on my mind these days, <laughs> big time, but um, you know, just kind of thinking from both perspectives and, and actually both of you have posted actively about this. Um, but you know, we're in this really politically charged moment right now. Um, you know, in the US, we've got the upcoming uh, presidential election, which the debates are going to be in shortly. Tonight. <laughs> right? Um, Black Lives Matter has finally moved from from this underground movement that you know, to now it's at the forefront on, an, on a national yeah. and also international scale. Um, right. And, you know, with Barbados just casting off the queen and, you know, even thinking about asking for or, or demanding reparations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this, for, for me, I, I think this moment, and I don't know, maybe I'm just like too hopeful for it, but it, it feels like this type of movement for equality and civil rights is something, and even, you know, independence from, um, the former colony or colonizers um, is, is, is something that hasn't happened really since the 60s, you know, mm -hmm. on to this scale right now. Um, what, what is, what, how do you perceive your relationship with plants and that, and what role does that play in this politically charged mo uh, mo moment that we're living in right now? Um, I think that is a hot mess, the whole thing. And this is the, you still have something to ground you. This is the thing that, you know, you can do, it's the same every day. Yes, there's surprises. Oh, a new leaf. Oh, this plant is dying. Ugh, I murdered that plant for some unknown reason. Um, but there's still plants at the end of the day. Is this one thing that you can just focus on and take care of outside of all the craziness? And it was really interesting for me because I joined the plant Instagram family the day before the black squares and all of that nonsense mm. um, happened, that uselessness. Um, and so it's always been politically charged for me because there are a lot of people who are like, oh, you know, let this be this one thing that you don't have to think about where 
you know, you don't have to include race. You don't have to talk about it. Actually, you know, this is something that is a very good representation as a microcosm of what's going on in the world. Because mm -hmm. even in that plant community space, there is that prejudice for sure. You can definitely see that Absolutely. certain people don't post people of color, mm -hmm. especially black people. Um, certain people don't want to be an ally because it hurts their image, it hurts their brand. Mm -hmm. And while it is relaxation and peace for me, it is also a way to be a community that, you know, we can talk with each other and have fun with each other, but also we can uplift each other in really terrible moments. This past week with the ruling on Breonna Taylor's case, um, that sent my mind into a world with, like, I, mm -hmm. I just, I, we knew, mm -hmm. like, I don't think anybody mm -hmm. was surprised. No we one, no one was surprised. Knew. No one was surprised. But it still hurt, like, hell, it was really terrible. Um, and a couple months ago, I had named one of my plants, Brianna Taylor, and I don't name my plants. I love the scientific names. It's the language geek in me. I, I love what they mean because they're named certain things for certain reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but Brianna Taylor is my pothos bowl, ginormous pothos bowl, and has five types of pothos in it. And I said, I would put it somewhere I would see it every day. And every time, why are you like starting to tear up? <laughs> I'm not doing that. And every day when I pass it, I would pray for her mom because I cannot imagine my daughter. I don't have children, but I'm a teacher. I love children. I can't imagine one of my kids, even a student, being put in that situation um, and having to like know that people are around in you and, and like still be a person and wake up every day. And then my wonderful friend and plant sister, Gloria from Black Girl Rooted, she, Hello. I was talking to her about it. Yes, my queen. She, we were talking together. Honestly, I feel like we're actual sisters. Like we, the way we connected doesn't make any sense, but we were talking about it and I was telling her, I really want people to, to do this, to name a plant after Brianna and mm -hmm. to care for that plant. If it dies, it dies, you replace it and you rename it Brianna, you what? know, but you just have that space where you can grieve properly in a mm -hmm. way that's beneficial for you and not detrimental to you because sometimes you grieve with anger. Um, sometimes it looks like, you know, you, you go into protest, which is fine, but then it can get violent, which is in my opinion, also fine because you're murdering people. We can be violent as well. But um, I get that people need a healthy way, a safe way to be a Black person and grieve the Black lives that have been lost. So naming a plant after somebody that was taken from us for no good reason was a good way to do that. So yes, it's peace, but it's also, it can be a political mm -hmm. act too for me. I think, uh, in my personal opinion, I think us even existing within this, you know, predominantly mm -hmm. white uh, plant space is a form of protest. Like, For sure. Like, being Black, period, being Black and carefree, period, is a form of resistance. That Just word existing, in your name, Black Boy Plant Joy, that joy, it, that is, is a form of resistance. For sure. It, period. Like, just even being here. On, even mm -hmm. on the Zoom in our living yeah. room yeah. is a form of resistance. <laughs> people see us. People who've never thought like, oh, Black people can have this space. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had Martha Stewart for so fucking long, excuse oh, me. Oh my goodness. Um, hey. you, know, you know what <laughs> I'm <Feel> saying? <laughs> you know, it, it, it was, it's, it's probably never been in someone's mind that there could be Black and Brown people who mm -hmm. could care for things, who, who could also do DIY things, who mm -hmm. could also have knowledge about plants, gardening, agriculture, horticulture, period. Mm -hmm. And I think us just doing this, living our Black carefree life is a form of resistance. Posting on Instagram as my new and like, as, as you know, trivial as it might be, that is a form of resistance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is protest. But the real key I, is that we, we're the people that have that started it. <laughs> this from, from time. This is not new. This Black people caring for things and making things grow and feeding you. It's, this is not new. 
you're just mm-hmm. now seeing it and you're you're pretending like oh you know that's cute okay we'll include you one person one black body you know for representation and we that one, that's it yes but we've been doing this we've been in the cane fields from you brought us from where we're supposed to be to do this so right we exactly. do this, you know <laughs> this is a new you know i love it yeah, yeah, no, I, I think that's a, I think that's a great point, and the, and I think you're absolutely right. That is the revolutionary act of like, you know, we've we've always had that, like Kershaw said, ha- you know, having this passed down from your great grandmother, mm-hmm. Sherry, having the plants just around you, you know, constantly, you know, it's 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 not new, but I think you have made it brand new for folks Mm -hmm. or just even Mm -hmm. even just your existence makes it makes people see that they can be you know that they can take this on themselves and maybe you do kill a plant but you're going to come back around (laughs) and you're going to grow this gigantic jungle so (laughs) like who who, who hasn't killed plants like I mean, some people pretend that they don't kill plants. They're pretending, but let me tell you. Liars, they're liars. They're liars, for sure. You can't, I read this quote that said, you can't really, you don't really know a plant until you kill it three times. Have y'all ever seen that? Oh, I hope it's that Let me tell you, I am an alocasia queen now. Like, I have dubbed myself the queen of alocasias because one, they're my favorite, you know, genus, but also I have gone through the thrips, the spider mice, the infestations. I know now, <laughs> you know, what, what, what can happen with an alopecia, what they're prone to. And you fail and you learn more. So the tea is, yes. I now know more than you. And what about it? That's so true. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I've gone through it. So, so you just jumped into my, to, to my next question. You know, we're t- talking about, you know, you, you love to go into your Latin. And um, I, I mean, I think to be, to be a plant person, you, you kind of have to know their Latin names. Otherwise, yeah. you, you know, you, you can't just say alocasia, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so, so what are your favorite genuses and species of plants? And what's your least favorite? I want to... <laughs> okay. Um... Here's the thing. I have a genus that I think is the best genus, and then I have Which my is? favorite. The best genus is Philodendron hands down. And let me tell you why. Per. Let me tell you why. They're hardy. You agree? They don't need too much. <laughs> and you can give a Philodendron to a beginner. Like I've given Philodendron moonlight to beginners, and they're good. It's fine. And they're stunning. Yeah. They come in so many beautiful varieties. Yeah. So Philodendron wins best. But my favorite is definitely alocasias. Like, yes, they're complicated girls. We get that. We understand that they need that high humidity. And they're different within each other. So you can't just say, okay, they like humidity and they like to be moist and do that for all of them. They 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 have specific needs for each mm-hmm. species. But you can't beat that leaf. Look at that. <laughs> like you just you cannot beat that's just a poly. That's not even like a rare alocasia, you know? Right. Like, that's just a poly. A L O C A S I A is alocasia. Mm-hmm. There you go. Somebody asked, somebody asked in the chat. <laughs> yeah. But I love all of the right varieties. I, I would never, I don't think I'll ever get tired of alocasias ever. So that's me. But now I'm feeling like I'm starting to love calatheas almost as much as alocasias. It's a problem. Oh, 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 Catrez is a, a Calathea person. Tell me yours. Okay. I, I love Calathea. Oh, well, so Philodendron's hands down are like my, one of my favorites. Um, I feel like a sleeper hit is a, the Syngonium. Also, mm. super easy, comes in so many different varieties yeah. and so many different colors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're so great. Yeah. Also, I also love Calatheas. I like to say, like, there's no Calathea slander on my page. Like, don't come, don't come near me, bad talking no Calathea, period. <laughs> because <laughs> at all, period, point blank. I think they're super easy. I think they're the easiest plants. Easy. Calatheas oh. are the easiest plants. Why don't you the stop The thing is, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you can take care of Alocasia, you can take care of Calathea. That's mm. true, but they're okay. not the easiest. Let's not lie to the people. We're not going to do that. I've never c- killed a Calathea it's because, in my life. It's be- oh, never. Whoa, then you're, you're Don't amazing. Don't listen to him. You're the, do not I'm listen gonna to I'm going to bow down to you. 
Never in my he whole life. He has a touch. That's a t- that's a gift. You, uh, you, you, can, you have that special. Yeah, people can kill them easily. I wouldn't give a beginner a calathea. If you that's have never raised life. a plant, do not touch a calathea because I just killed three <laughs> in the last couple months. Like they hurt your feelings badly. It's emotional trauma. But the thing, sure. but the thing, but here's the thing: they they are marantas, so they tell you what they need. If your that's calathea true. is not dancing, if it's not moving up and down, then you probably need to change something. Mm-hmm. If yeah. you don't spot it right off the bat, yeah, they'll die. But if you catch it early on, like you can, yeah, you can die. trouble, you can troubleshoot what the issue is. You're right. You're well, right. tell tell that. that to my or bef- to, no, not not my my ornata that just it started declining and then it just went away and Rest I could never peace. bring it back. So so Rest so for so for folks, calathea is often caught. Con- uh, oftentimes called a prayer plant that you'll mm-hmm. see in stores. Um, so yes, <laughs> be, <laughs> be careful with those. <laughs> prayer plant, uh, like Stroman, Stromanthi. They're so, all in the prayer plant family. It's Latin. <laughs> yeah. So 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 really for for y'all, like there's a lot of people getting into plants right now. What would you? And please don't say Calathea, but <laughs> what? That's what you're not going to do. For folks who are just starting out, you know, what should they get? Someone who has killed a plant. cactus. Okay. Snake plant. <laughs> okay. Here's why I will never recommend a snake plant to a beginner. Hmm. Never. Because wow. as a beginner, when I started and I had the Monstera adansoniae, I got a leaf a, a week. And that made me want to keep going. With okay. snake plants, you don't get growth often you okay. don't get it like it's not as prolific as the other um the other plants you could get but you see algonemas let me tell you something not the algonemas. not the bougie ones that you have that the regular <laughs> grocery store ones the regular store bought yeah those mm. algonemas i don't think an algonema can run anybody it's like a more prolific version of a snake plant because you'll get more leaves You'll feel right. like you're doing something. And I'm big. That's how I teach. Like, I need the children to feel it's like, okay, I'm achieving something. Because right. if not, they give up. So it, it is more satisfying me, when things grow. Yeah, you feel like you're doing well, and then you want to do more. So I, I right. really like, I like Aglanemus for that. You're but I would also say a Monstera Deliciosa, it never hurt Deliciosa. nobody. Or Edinsonii. Also. Yeah, it never hurt nobody. Yeah. They're really, nobody. they're really good plants for a beginner, I think. Pothos. Golden oh, pothos, yeah, marble sure. queen pothos, uh, escandapsis, like silvery ann, like, yes. you know, yes. th- these are plants that, like you said, they grow really quickly. So you feel like you're like, oh, I good. can really do it. I exactly. can really do the damn thing. Mm-hmm. That's so, why yes. I named Brianna after that bowl, because I don't think I'm going to be emotionally okay if I kill my Brianna Taylor plant. <laughs> you understand? I feel that. Yeah, yeah, I got that. She yeah, has yeah, yeah. to survive. She has to. So yeah. and if she dies, I'll replace her. But I had to make sure it was something that's like it's easy, as you said, with the Calatheas, they tell you what you what they need. Oh Pothos tell you what they need. They're just like, okay, I'm gonna curl just a little bit. Can I, get, little bit. Can I get some water? And mm-hmm. then they're done. They they're mm-hmm. so low maintenance. So I, I think those are good for you. You're right. For beginners, pothos, of course. Also, Egly and Eva, you're absolutely correct. Because mine is like mm-hmm. sitting like in a shady-ish spot. Yeah. They can do and, low like, light, they can do bright light indirect. They're good. They're happy. They pop, pop off. It, yeah. But yeah. Um, I, 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 just, I just have to say, Brittany said these sound like Harry Potter spells. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> who, else, who else said Elijah was like, wait, what language is this? <laughs> yeah. You know what? I also need to be mindful to say the common names, but sometimes I don't remember the common names at all. But I know mm-hmm. an algonema is a Chinese evergreen. Evergreen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So... I don't know if that helps. The thing is, like, I always get, I'll, I'll always say one or the other. Like, I'll never call mm-hmm. it uh, an aglionema Chinese evergreen. I'm like, oh, it's an aglionema. Exactly. Yeah. You know. I, yeah. And I don't want to call it evergreen in case people think they're just green. They're so pretty. <laughs> you know? Like, they're, they're, they're I can't call you green. Mine are all, like, <laughs> really pink and really pretty. So I have a few that are just <laughs> green and white, but I'm not calling you an evergreen. That don't make no sense. Why? Someone I said know. plants uh, good for asthma or allergies. I say most of them. They're not like flowers, so they're not going to pull out any pollen unless they bloom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which you're going to always I just... also agreed. I also think people have this notion that, um, 
you know, you can just get an air purifying implant. That'll be great for you. You would have to have a greenhouse yeah. full of those plants. Yes. You would have a forest. Like your whole you're home not, would have to be full of them. Exactly. Your little snake plant, you're purifying nothing. So just don't worry so, about so that. So Sherry, you know? you're on the way to that, I would got to say. <laughs> <laughs> I might, okay, me, yes, because I have a lot in one area, but right. you kind of get four plants and think, oh, yeah, my air is being mm -hmm. really purified. No, it's just not happening. I'm sorry. Sorry to burst the bubble. <laughs> While you're just breaking dreams today. We have to be honest. <laughs> oh. Enjoying begonias. Um, begonias are not for beginners, period. Don't, I love they will break your heart. you said that, but you're like, yeah, get a calathea. <laughs> well, because, because honestly, <laughs> like I said, Calatheas will tell you, begonias will just die. You're actually so right. I've never gotten a sign from one begonia, ever. I've never, begonias have never they been just, like, oh, I, they just go. They, they just will just go. die. Mm -hmm. You're like, so right. As, if one leaf goes, the whole thing is gone. It's, mm -hmm. it's game over. <sighs> I don't know. I have, I have four, two, I have one now. I have two angel wings and then another random one. Um, that's just really silvery and it was in the supermarket. I couldn't leave it. But the angel wings, they just like to be kept moist. I'm not, yeah, you're so right. I would never recommend that for a beginner because you got to stay on top mm -hmm. of it. If you got a job, mm -mm, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so so we, we're starting to get into questions and I see questions uh, coming up into the chat. Um, I am looking at both screens right now. Um, but you know, as we're talking today, I would just want, can you address some of the most common questions that you get since, since the two of you are pretty much on a daily giving advice? So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what was the one I got recently? Okay, I just want for like, as an overall statement, like people buy pots with drainage holes, period. Buy pots with drainage holes, and can we stop putting rocks at, at the bottom? It, Let's it, it's do it. Not, Let's stop. It's not doing anything for your plant, I promise Absolutely. you. I know, I know you feel like when you do it, you feel like you're like, you build, you're Bill Nye, like you're MacGyver, like you're like really <laughs> doing it, but I'm here to tell you, don't do that. Stop. <laughs> it's a waste. It's a complete waste. I don't always get, um, I get a lot of questions about orchids because my dad's favorite, one of his favorite plants, orchids, and I'm getting into them now. They're really high on my like, oh my gosh, I love you so much list. And so I get like care questions for orchids most often. Then people will ask me like, mostly what soil is good, which mm. is... I'm not, I'm a chef. I'm not a baker. So I don't measure anything. Okay. I'm not out here measuring. I'm not going to tell you one part, two parts. I don't care. I know what it feels like. So I can, I can show you what a good mix is. And for me, that is really a good pot of mix. We have a really good local one um, called Nature Mix and it has the best compost, excellent potassium content. Awesome. It's great pot of mix. And then we also have some orchid bar. I think I like orchid bar more than perlite, if it's possible. It's just mm -hmm. so, I just like how it feels. Um, but I also do perlite. I'll do a slow release fertilizer. I'll do horticultural charcoal. I'll do some compost. And yeah, I think that's about it. And I mix that. <laughs> you just said <laughs> like 20 I mean, things and you're like, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, I agree. See. I'll do some peat, but not for a lot of plants. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I, I visually, I'm like, this is what it looks, this is what it needs to look Correct. like. Correct, yes. So I measure nothing. And, and also so, I kind of do it. Oh, no, 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 go ahead. But I, but I just like, if you could say like, you know, for the beginner folks that don't even know what they're doing, which, which should they get, Cartres? Something for drainage, <laughs> like, always. Always drainage, 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 drainage. Drainage, like a drainage Her period. Life. Perlite, orchid bark, um, yeah. Por perlite, Don't just orchid use a bark. pot in mix by itself. Mm -hmm. I always I, ask something for drainage. Go ahead, Cartridge. Yeah, I agree. But my, when I first started, like you, I, I could not be bothered with making my own soil, period. So I know half these folks who just, you know, just started prior, like, girl, I ain't going out no store and buying no <laughs> damn orchid bark for this, which is, which is fine. So what I would say is like, if you're one of the people who are lazy and I, I feel you, like I'm a lazy hoe as well. Just uh, get <laughs> regular, regular potting mates, throw in some perlite, like a nice chunk of perlite 
and call it a day. And yeah. that should be Easy. sufficient. But yeah. if you become like a, a bougie, uh, a bougie ass plant person like us, uh, <laughs> you might want to have, you might want to upgrade some things, you know? Yeah. I would also say people also ask me a lot about terracotta. Mm-hmm. We I just got, love, Laura just asked that question. Yes. Yeah, I just saw terracotta. <clears throat> people ask me about that a lot. Let me tell you something. If you want these cute little pretty plants, the calatheas, the alocasias, the, the warm temperature and humidity loving and moist loving plants, you need to leave that terracotta alone. Leave it alone. It's real cute. It's real affordable. <laughs> it's very good for philodendron. But even so, I would say keep it in the nursery pot. That's always the best advice. Keep mm. it in the nursery pot like this and put it in the decorative pot. A, a, a cash pot. The thing is, okay, I think, because I only use terracotta. For everything? Everything, period. Um, Does it have the, the nursery pot inside of it? Getting juicy no. here. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I use terracotta only. But here, so here's the trick I've learned with Alocasia, Sherry, you'll, you'll be like, whoa, I didn't know that. If you put moss substrate in your pot, it mm -hmm. keeps the roots airy and moist at all times. I have so to. I've seen you do the layers and the different things, and it was yes, like, I want to that. And then you put soil on top as a barrier, so not all the water goes okay. to the moss. So it's just enough water to keep the roots moist. Mm -hmm. And I keep it in my terracotta because the terracotta, if you're like an overwater like I am, because like I'm trying to give all my love, mm -hmm. the terracotta will absorb any of that extra water. I think I'm an underwater because See, I was going to say, it also like, depends on, like, the person. Yeah, it depends, like, it depends on the person. I mm -hmm. don't like to give them too much because the, the worst thing for me is a yellow leaf that wasn't because you were photosynthesizing anything. It was because of me. And I, I just, we're not, you're not giving me that emotional trauma of, like, I am killing you. So I try to give them as little water as they need. And for my mm -hmm. alocasias, that works really well, where I give them a little bit of water often instead of a lot of water you mm -hmm. know so i give a little bit at a time often and they're good i actually do have i have a couple alocasias i probably have 12 or 13 types of alocasias and wow. a lot of my alocasias are in terracotta in because i mm -hmm. like to water the alocasias i like to take care of them specifically mm -hmm. a lot but now that I'm, at, I'm back at school teaching and i don't have the time i need to transfer those back in the mm -hmm. nursery pots because they're gonna dry out like that they today i came home and i said you know what i'm gonna get one for the for the call i'm gonna put it there it's gonna be so cute you know what you know, there was three yellow leaves on that thing dry dry because it's in terracotta and it it can't handle the neglect if I, if i keep that in terracotta i need to look at that every single day and i don't have the time so i have to right you gotta do what makes sense for your lifestyle and everybody's uh, you know i love that because i think people are all i think oftentimes individuals i love that you just had that conversation because <clears throat> a lot of people will be like this is the only thing that i use yeah i never yeah. use that and so i love that, you that. Try. just See broke it down for like it depends on who you are and how you you know how what your care and your schedule is yeah, yeah. like if you're oh, i think if you're like me if you're <clears throat> i call myself a water bender if you like avatar if you like love to water your plants terracotta is the way to go because it will awesome. help you out with root rot for sure, Perfect. but if you're, do you? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but I was like, but if if you are like Sherry and you you like to be like trickly trick trickle, do it with the with the plastic nursery pot because the plastic nursery pot will retain the water. Yeah, well, I, I also want to know, do you bottom water? Because I ain't got a time, but I think it would I, be much better for my plant. I so I have one plant, one plant that I keep in a nursery pot, and it's a begonia, and it's also the only plant that I bottom water. Okay. okay. The only one. Why? Are you scared that you give it too much water if you water it yourself? Well, I just find that like... Oops, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Bottom watering is a very technical term. Can you explain <laughs> it? <laughs> oh. Yes. Bottom watering. Yes. <laughs> so bottom watering is basically when you uh, use a... Some people use a pebble tray. I use a pebble tray. Yeah. So you use your saucer that you get with like uh, a terracotta or if you don't have any type of saucer. You fill it with um, pebbles, you put water in it, 
And if you get a pot with a drainage hole, as you all should, the water will evaporate into your soil mixture and that's how the, the roots yeah. get moist. The roots will soak up as much as they need and then yep. it'll be done. You take it out and that's it. Which yep. honestly is the best way, in my opinion, for a lot of these plants um, that are more prone to gnats. But i rather just get some orchid bar and put it on the top chunkify the top of it to avoid the gnats because okay. I don't have the time to sit down and wait and say are you good did you have enough you're not a baby or a plant drink the water let's go you know like I, don't I, I feel that 100% yeah. I, I, I know people always yeah. emphasize like I don't want to do this because it might stress my plant out I I don't know if I'm a really crappy plant dad but I don't care about my plants being stressed mm -mm. I'm stressed worry about me like, I'm stressed <laughs> I'm yeah. stressed. You don't got yeah. no damn bills. You don't got no, you don't got, uh, uh, you know, family dysfunction. Yeah. Like, I think you're okay. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't care. I don't care. I agree. I agree. Someone is asking about air plants. Do you have? I don't have any uh, Talanzigas. I don't have any air plants. I have a couple and I also <laughs> like to give those away because they just say, oh, just here. It doesn't even need soil. You're good. Um, I tend to <laughs> yeah. keep my... <laughs> I tend to keep my air plants in another pot. So my Monstera for a long time had like three air plants in the pot. Um, my first Monstera, I have like seven. Um, but it had um, the air plants there. So whenever that got wet, they would get wet. They like mm. sun too. They're, they're easy. They're not, just make sure you give them water every now and then. And again. What? I'm okay, about, sure. I'm about to break the wall. So I have this cute little air plant right here. I don't have and that I, type. That's cute. And Cartra, I want you to talk about the the, the IKEA greenhouse cabinets because because I put this in there oh. and I do nothing. I do nothing. I, I've not done anything to it. <laughs> not a damn thing. Um, nothing. So so I uh, maybe I can turn my my thing around. Um, so I have this. I saw it on the internet as most of us have seen about turning a glass cabinet from Ikea into a giant greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So let me just, let me just try to turn this around. Okay. There so, she is. Okay, that one is gigantic. <laughs> so Beautiful. this is her. Um, and it's, it's basically, good thing I'm wearing pants, honey, because I... <laughs> Lord knows when these when, when these Zoom things happen, I'd be like underwear <laughs> and sweatpants. Um, so basically, it just becomes a giant greenhouse. So there's fans on each. Can you see me? We can see you. So there's fans on each level. There's a humidifier at the bottom, and there's grow lights in here. So basically, it keeps everything moist. The humidity stays above eighty at all times. And when the lights go off, when the lights go off because of light um, at heat. I think the humidity gets to about 90. Ooh. Wow. Yes, so it really, when the humidity, humidity is great for stimulating growth. So everything in there grows like a weed, when I tell you. And it's like, and it's also like a great conversation piece for your home, let me tell you. People come here, they think it's like the holy grail. Yeah, I think it <laughs> like, is, and I'm not even there. I need it. I mean, you you live in the Holy Grail, Sherry. Though we're we're, we're trying to recreate this little tropical environment in a box. <laughs> right, I right. Inside. I want it inside too because it's so great. I only recently, it's only now, like maybe a couple of weeks ago, that I started bringing plants inside because the way the sun works all over the place, you know, it shifts, but it's shifting now to come into my room. So there's more light coming out of my south facing window. So I now have plants in here, but now that I, like I see people and I'm like, I want that inside. I don't have that great lighting that other people have inside. So, you know, you want, you have, and then you want what well, you don't have. Me neither. I, just... I don't have great uh, light right now because mm. the seasons are changing. At the beginning yeah. of the summer, this apartment had better light. So I've, I have, in this room specifically, this is like my jungle is where I have like so many grow lights. There's one literally right behind us, that mm -hmm. one. Okay. for my uh my giant monstera uh type oh, look constellation at that stylish grow light okay can you take this <laughs> to her oh uh, yeah <laughs> this is mobile right you see um, this is the thing we have oh honey 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 so i can her. see the stars all the way wow here 
Okay, uh, that, that is a special designer plant, y'all. <laughs> um, so this is like, yeah, this is her. Wow. This is her newest lady. Just, you see, what you're not going to do is say casually, oh, yeah, this is her. Listen to me. <laughs> that is gorgeous. She's, she's I have beautiful. No access to plants. Like, I don't have access to rare plants in Barbados. So we have a beautiful country, but we don't have access to stuff like that. I can't get okay. a Thai constellation, even if I was willing to pay the money that they cost. You know, I can't get that. So when I see those, I'm just like, <laughs> is, when is, God, there, is there a reason why? Is it because of like uh, importing restrictions? I think because of the cost. So we only have, I want to say two nurseries, but I really only know of one nursery that imports plants. Um, okay. Don't get me wrong, they import them at excellent prices because I bought this for, this is my, um, the Birkin. Birkin, yeah. Birkin, so baby. And Birkin for a Birkin. It costs, with three plants in the pot, it costs 40 something dollars, which is 20 something US. So okay. that's an example of like, and this dotty as well, huge, and it costs $42. So our plants are great at great prices, but we don't get the super rare plants. It's a one-off if, if you know somebody that has some, but I've never seen somebody in Barbados with a Thai, with a, with a variegated monstera ever, ever. Wow. And I've been looking. Okay. <laughs> well, wow. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out how to get one in for you. <laughs> God bless. Um, we have another question about, um, ooh, I don't know. I can't answer this question. So hopefully you two can answer. Uh, Alana um, from Facebook says, my indoor fern has been drying up, but I feel like I water it a lot and I missed it daily. Any tips? I don't mess with ferns. ferns. I don't mess with ferns. Nobody mentioned ferns. Ain't nobody, nobody mentioned ferns. ferns. I have I don't, one fern. I don't like them. One. I don't like ferns. Ferns um, but, I like outside because yeah. the humidity outside allows for that. I'm yeah. not bringing a fern into my energy, into my space. I'm just stay outside because you're going to thrive when I leave you alone. Mm -hmm. Just like maiden, maiden hair ferns grow wild hair. But yeah. had I put that in a pot, dead. Just like that. <laughs> well, it's also, I always think um, when I have a plant that is being difficult, I always go back and think, what is the environment that this plant came from? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had one fern and I hated it. Um, but I did my own little research. And ferns are normally shrubbery. So they do not mm -hmm. need a lot of light at all and they also do not need a lot of water yeah they don't need so a lot of water at all they're used to like partial shade so i always say with ferns leave it alone mm -hmm. give i it would a routine, also say leave it alone. i don't see you said give it a routine with my but i do i will admit i have an easy fern the one that i have in a pot we have a lot growing outside mm -hmm. but the one that i have in a, in a pot is a it's either fox tail or bottle brush. I can't remember. You you okay. know I don't care about a plant if I don't know the Latin name. Like I don't care. Um, but it's outside, and you know when I water that, never it gets water when it rains. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't rain, you best luck. I'm sorry. You, you, I hope you survive. I hope you make it. But I don't care. Figure it out on your own, because I'm not going through. You see how solstice of plants is like. She's now angry at ferns. I'm not doing that. Like, you're not going to make me angry. You're not going to, mm -mm. mm. That relationship always, with Krisha has. Mm -mm. I always <laughs> say that it's always the plants that you neglect are the ones that thrive the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really bizarre because plant plants, I always say your house, wherever you keep your plant, period, in your home, the conditions, nine times out of ten, will be a lot better in your home than where they are outside, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. So my thing is, like, Leave it alone, and it'll do its thing. I promise. It'll, it will adapt. Mm -hmm. Sometimes will plants adapt. just need to be left alone. That's true. Once yeah. you have things, once you have these three basic things down, water, light, soil, the plant, just leave it alone. Stop like being like, oh, it's hard because especially if you have three plants, you're super obsessive of those three plants. But when you're like me and you're psychotic a little bit and you have like 200, I can't do this every plant every mm -hmm. single day yeah. anymore, especially mm -hmm. not with a with a job. So 
now it's like I literally said that on my walkthrough yesterday. I don't look at that for an and it is growing beautifully. It is gorgeous, stunning. Yep, that's how it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely have some of those plants where I'm like, I went on vacation and I was like, they're gonna be dead. Why did they grow more? <laughs> well, yeah. <I'm> good. <laughs> when I was here, I also just kind of want to like out. add. Yeah, I also want to kind of add on like I've. I have a couple ferns outside and they're, they're just native to here and they do great. Um, I don't, mm -hmm. I can't really claim them, I guess. But when I did have ferns inside, I thought when they were turning brown, it was because they were dry. Turns out they were turning brown because I overwatered them. So that, mm -hmm. that could be, you know, exactly what you two yeah. are saying. Someone is asking if we mix, if we spray our leaves. Do you, Cartridge? Cartridge, do uh, you spray your leaves? Uh, spray it like just with water? I think they mean to mist it, yeah, you with miss water. Them. Oh yeah, I try to do it every morning. I use um, a, a solution of water, peppermint oil, and rosemary oil because it helps with like uh, it's a natural pest repellent. Because yes, it that rosemary, like spider mites, yeah. gnats, thrips. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to repel them allegedly, yeah. but I've never had spider mites. I've never had thrips, so something's working. Wow, you that never? is incredible. No, he's never right. killed a calathea. He's never had he's a spider never... bite. <laughs> You and the thing is, I, w I wish I was lying, but I'm not. I've never, I've never had spider mites. I've never had thrips. That's crazy. I've definitely had almost every pest known to man for sure. <laughs> but I feel like having them, like t it teaches you a lot. If you have to get rid of them, or they'll kill all of your money, will be dead. Like <laughs> all of this money would go if I if I didn't right. know how to to take care of them, you know. But in terms of missing, a lot of people there's this big debate: should you miss your plants? Should you not miss your plants? Do what you want to do. Y'all doing yeah. too much. Y'all doing too much. Y'all trying to figure out every little thing. If missing your plants makes you happy, do miss it. Them. Miss them. What I will say is because I live in a really humid environment, I'm not too worried about, oh, I need to miss it to create humidity. I'm not saying that it mm. does, but I do miss, I'm trying to miss my alocasias and pest prone plants like once a week with a uh, neem spray situation but sometimes i just like i was at work today and i was with brianna i was like girl mm -hmm. why because <laughs> i wanted to not because mm -hmm. it did anything but i i don't know the science behind that i'm not a botanist so i can't say but i like missing for fun not for like purpose right <laughs> And I also have good airflow, so it's not like the water's just sitting stagnant. Just sitting there. there. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about favorite places to get plants. What's your favorite shop or spot to get to acquire <laughs> your new plant babies? Uh, I, go ahead, Carter. Go for it. No, go, go, go. go for it? Okay. My favorite place to get plants is from old ladies. They're the best. When an old lady gives really you a cute. plant. It's just the best thing I've gotten. So it's ridiculous how many plants I've gotten from nice old ladies who just, mm -hmm. they love plants and they're like, oh my gosh, you're a young person that likes plants. Here, have this. Like, and they do it with such love and then they tell you all these stories. I love that. In terms of actual stores, I'm not an insane person. I know what you're asking me. In terms of actual <laughs> stores, um, there's a store really, um, really dangerously close to my home called Muddy Boots and I love Muddy Boots. Best supplies, excellent customer service. There's the lady there named Rose. I mean, like, <laughs> and she's so sweet. Life. She's so wonderful. She's so nice and so helpful. She was really instrumental at the beginning of my like plant mom situation and like helping me and just chatting with me. And then there's another place for exotics and stuff. The only option I've seen is nature care. So those are my those are my spots. I can't order online. I really wish sometimes I'd be on Etsy just looking like oh, that's hard. imports. Yeah. <laughs> it's sad. Um, so I get mine from like a, a variety of places. Um, so my big uh, Thai constellation monster I got from one of my favorite, favorite shops in the city called Foliage Garden NYC. They're amazing. I love them so much and they treat me like family. Like I couldn't speak Aww. of them any higher than I do already. Um, but everything else I get off the internet from various places. So when I first started buying plants off the internet, it was from Etsy. Mm -hmm. Etsy, 
they have a lot of variety. Um, but now, like, I, I've bought plants off eBay. Uh, I'm in several, like, plant Facebook groups that have, like, independent sellers. So I've bought oh, you went that deep. from there. Oh, honey. I'm in those groups and I can't get from those people. Oh, no. I'm in those oh, my God. I just watch. I'm just like. The rabbit hole <laughs> is so deep. Um, yeah. yeah, and there are a couple, like, major... Um, online suppliers in the states like gabriella's online i love mm -hmm. their products are amazing um i was gonna say bros with hoes but they're a little problematic these days <laughs> oh um, no so never mind um <laughs> there's another small independent shop called oh, dream leaves that i enjoy but i like i'm a person who likes to scout so mm -hmm. this, plant prices are crazy at the moment because mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's a pandemic and there's a plant demic Yes, for sure. Um, so prices are crazy. So I always try to find like if there's a really if there's a plant that I want, I, I will search and I don't mind waiting. Mm -hmm. um, like you know where else I love to go? Where? The side of the road. Mm -hmm. I in the Caribbean. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot I, you're in the Barbados. It's different. Let me tell you something. That, that snip snip stays in the car just in case. I have been mm -hmm. driving and had to reverse run really fast you know <laughs> pray that nobody catches me i don't steal from people i don't believe in that but if i see you growing wild that's free for all i'm mm, getting right. it if you want to treat a rubber tree I, I saw the other day there was this variegated rubber tree a burgundy one it was like mm, it'd be nice to have a rubber wow. tree but i'm not buying one snip Wow. Yeah, I'm a snip. I'm a snip. Well, you live in the tropics, so it's really yeah. in, New York, <laughs> in New York City. We don't have that luxury, honey. That is not. That, yeah. that is not you know what you might need to do when you go to your friend's house if they have flats, just carry that snipper in your bag and just be like, <laughs> you, know, you don't I think mind I if I take a little clip. <laughs> Gosh. Oh no. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Um, what's, what's next for both of you? Do you have any new plant related ventures you want to share with the audience or, or also non plant related or fine as well? I'm starting my YouTube channel on Saturday. And I'm very Saturday. excited about it. Mm -hmm. Because I love Instagram, love, 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 but my true love is, is YouTube. And whenever I got good information, it was usually from YouTube. It wasn't mm -hmm. from a cute post with a plant like, hi, oh, look, I'm so cute. I love that. There's a place for it and I'm going to continue to do it always. But I love the actual science behind things. And I, I yes, there's IGTV, but I don't know. I really want to see people like me in the YouTube space. There's not many big mm -hmm. black Caribbean girls doing house flat. So I, I just, I want to take up that space. So that's it for me. I love it. But, um, uh, well, I still do theater, obviously. Uh, I'm in a reading for a new show that's coming up soon. Um, but uh, I guess you guys will be the first to hear it, but I just had um, an interview with Repeller, the magazine Repeller, and a photo shoot that came on Friday. Oh, I think <laughs> you saw that in your stories. Well, only if you're my close friends, you saw it. Oh, oh. 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 that's special. <laughs> um, so that's supposed to come out on the second. So that, that's guess, really yeah. cool. Also, can wow. I say I'm a very big Broadway fan, and I will be messaging you after this. Like, I <laughs> have been in New York maybe four times in the last two years. I. <laughs> yes, yeah, slide into those DMs. I'm a theater lover. Like I love theater and I love musical theater specifically. Yes! So I'm like a huge, I'm a huge theater buff. So yeah. I will tell Come you, I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've pretended to be a soccer with my plants from What's on the Island. Mama will provide. Mama will provide. She she sure enough that. will. <laughs> she has to. She's not a so, She sure enough will. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy about that. Oh my gosh, I love that. That is amazing. Anything else you wanna, any last thoughts you wanna leave folks with? Uh, vote, watch the debate. If you're in the States, vote, register to vote. Yeah. Vote, vote yeah. for the right person. I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for, but make sure it's the right one, because there is a wrong one. <laughs> we think you know. <laughs> I mean, come on, there's whatever. Figure it out. If you, if you are a person of color and you don't see who the wrong person is, something, you know, there are people that provide mental health services and you should I'm use that. 
Yeah, no, you need that because it could not be clearer. There's, it's not, it's no longer just like, oh, this is what my political beliefs are. This is like, do you care about human beings? Do you want them to survive? Do you like democracy? <laughs> you might want to vote for the right person. Mm-hmm. And it might not be vote. the best choice, but you might got to settle. Well, you just exactly. need to settle. This time, yeah. Just, just <laughs> settle. <real>. This time. <laughs> you don't have a choice. Oh. Oh, before we go, though, we definitely, someone wants to know what your YouTube channel name is, Sherry. Hi, I'm Sherry, and welcome back to my garden. Um, today, I'm going to be talking to you straight from Carib Cultivated. It's going to be the same Carib name as my Instagram. Yeah, Carib Cultivated. C-A-R-I-B. C-U-L-T-I-V-A-T-E-D. Why, why was that a challenge? Well, it's, it's you figured it out. You, you had to figure out which <laughs> language it was. You, well, you had to figure out which of the five. Uh, but I would also say to anybody who is watching, get a plant and gift a plant. Gift, gifting plants is, is something that is so wonderful. And if you have a plant, share your plant, snip it. Don't feel like it won't grow back. Like plants actually love that. They will grow. I found they grow even better when you, when you trim them enough. Um, and you can kill plants, it's okay. It's all right. It's okay. You can kill them. Yeah, they're gonna be all right. You'll, you'll get another one. Get one from where it goes, you know, it's fine. Just enjoy it and make time, even if it isn't plants, make time for something that makes your soul happy that has nothing to do with other people. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any, anything from you, Cartres? No, no, hello. No, I won't even try to do it. Oh my it. gosh, you oh. have to. You don't have a choice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Because for folks who don't know, Cartres does mess. these amazing stories that are just beautifully edited. And he sings. I mean, he sang, sang, sang. So. His runs? His runs make me want to work out. Like, I want to run. I don't even like, know. It's, <laughs> Is, is amazing. Sorry to you put you in the no pot. Actually, 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 Cartres, Paul told me, House Plants SF told me that I should ask you to, so. <laughs> um, yes. Should I just do the, do you want just the riff or do you want a song? Can you give us Whatever. everything that you can give us? Thank you. <laughs> Brittany wants to throw us chair when you sang. Yes. Oh, oh, goodness gracious. That's the black people saying that you're amazing, just throwing things at you. Oh, no, no. Well, I don't, the thing is, like, I don't even remember what the riff is half the time. Hello! Something like, it's something like that. That's, that's how not, we start our videos. Gonna, you see, this is what I can't stand. You're not going to be amazing and then be like, something like that. You're too casual. It's something like that. <laughs> We're not gonna let you get away with that. <laughs> no. that, 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 that was the toned down version of how they it go. It was, away. and it's still amazing. It's still, it's amazing. still amazing. And they I should have known you were on Broadway because that voice, <laughs> that's not normal. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Thank you yeah, both so much. You guys are amazing. I love you. I can't wait to see what's coming next. Carib Cultivated, Black Boy Plant Joy. Everybody, if you're not following them, make sure you follow them. Go to Broadway. Mm-hmm. Cartrez, I hope you let us know so we can share out on uh, Moad social media when you're doing the reading. Yeah. Sherry, please let us know about your YouTube. We'll link to it. I I'm, I'm excited. Wait, just yeah. before we leave, did we ever find out what happened to Brittany? Is it? Well, I'm scared not, that she's not okay. I, I, you know, she has she has little kids at home, so <laughs> I can, I when can you have it. children, anything can happen. Anything can pop right. up. Just especially like that. when you're anything. the mama. So I'm just gonna yeah. assume. <laughs> yeah, and she's also very type A, so I know she wouldn't have just been like not here. Mm-hmm. So I'm right. Yeah, we need to message her, make sure she's good. For sure, right. for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thank but you. Thank you, you so, much so much for having us. Yes. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you I want to do place. this again. Me too. <laughs> yes. What? So let's let's plan on it. Alrighty. All right. Thank Thanks everyone for joining Thank us. Um, this conversation will be posted on Moad's YouTube later, but it's also on our Facebook and it's Moad, M-O-A-D, S-F is in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Have a beautiful one and we'll see everybody real soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys for being here.